So here we are guys, the um, long awaited or perhaps unexpected all my modules video. I know that some of you who have uh, been on this channel a while will sort of be aware of this bottom case because that's the one that I sort of travel with and used to write most of my music on. But there's also this bigger case which is basically where things that I take out of here for whatever reason end up. That said, there's a lot of stuff in the big case that I love and do use pretty often. And there's also some in there that I basically had to take out because I was using them too much and my whole sound was becoming that module. And sometimes, it, you know, you reach that point, you've got to be like, no, you're out, you're out. Um, so let's dive in. We'll start at the top and work down. So first up, we've got the Dopfer A199 Spring Reverb. I honestly think this is one of the best sounding reverbs in the whole of Eurorack. It sounds amazing. It can really sort of define your sound into getting towards some of those like Buchlerish noises that I, were one of the first reasons I wanted to get into modular. It's also really cheap, so I'd recommend it to absolutely anybody who wants like the best cheap reverb in modular. The only reason that this one has not made it into the bottom case is because it has to have a sort of separate tank with it. And whenever I put the tank inside the case, uh, I get a lot of sort of electrical noise. So for that reason, it's not really practical for me to travel with it or use it live. Next up is the Dot, uh, A110. VCO. I've actually got two of these. There's another one here. And until really recently, this one was in the bottom case. The only reason it's moved out is because the Buchler oscillator came out. That said, like really cheap. I love that these have got octave switches. I've since moving to the Buchler oscillator being my main analog oscillator in this case, I've really missed that. You know, it's great in a performance to be able to sort of have a lead part and suddenly drop it down to octaves and then it's the bass part. You get, don't get that with any oscillator that doesn't have octave switches. Next up is the Dopfer A114 ring modulator. It's um, actually two channels of ring modulation. Uh, if you want a ring modulation module, it's good. Dopfer A115 audio divider. This is a great module and one that I do miss. It sort of allows you to take a square wave and create like octaves below it and then set different levels of all of those to make a new sound. I don't think there's any other sort of way you can make that sort of analog multi-octave sound. Yet, yeah, it's, it's one of those modules that you could buy and it will just suddenly open up a whole new sound world to you. For me, it took up too much HP for how often I used it, so that's why it's not in the bottom case. Next is the dot for A116 waveform processor. I've just never really used it. Like, um, I've never been that into wave folding. Uh, the Dopfer A120 VCF, so this is an amazing sort of Moog-ish filter and I used to use this all the time. The reason it gets used less now is because between the Mother32, the LXD and the Wasp filter, I've got sort of all the flexibility from filters that I just feel like I need. Next up is the Dopfer A1066 expander filter. I've never really loved the sound of this. It's useful to have like any type of filter like low pass, high pass, notch and it's a bit of a jack of all trades, but I've just never loved the sound of it, so. Here I've got a couple of dot for VCAs. There's a linear one and an exponential one. Uh, yeah, I do I do really miss having them. I know you can never have enough VCAs. To be honest, I've never used that many VCAs. For me, it's more you can never have enough voices. Uh, but they both work and they're cheap, but if I were to put some VCAs into the bottom case, they would be, I'd find something smaller that can do more VCAs in a smaller. Next up is these Dopfer mixers. There's two of those. I used to use these all of the time. However, since moving to the Expert Sleepers ES9, I really don't use them very often. That's because I try and take as many individual stems out of the modular so I can record them separately and come back to mix them later as possible. For a lot of people's workflow, you do need a lot of mixes and definitely in the workflow I used to have. Dopfer stuff just works and they have great customer service if anything breaks, which is why I've got so much of it. Uh, next up is the A170 dual slew limiter. Either you can use it on like audio rate stuff, uh, sounds like you're filtering it, or you can use it for like your more classic portamento. This is great and I would recommend it, however, if you've got maths, it's basically got two of these in built into it and maths can do like 10,000 other things. So you don't really need this. Uh, here I've got Mutable Instrument Shades. This is an amazing module and one that I do constantly find myself wishing I had room for in this case. It can either output like a negative or positive or positive only CV or it can three attenuators or attenuverters or you can use it as a little mixer. So it's just so useful for so many different things. It's an amazingly cleverly designed module 
for a mutable instrument and I think it was pretty cheap so I would yeah I'd recommend anybody buy this. Here I've got the Dopfer clock dividers. Uh, I, when I did the rig rundown of this case it was in here and I do miss it. What I would usually do is like feed it a Euclidean rhythm from PAMS just to get a load of sort of semi-random gates or gates that are in time with the rest of the beat but happening not like once every bar like you know they're, they're sort of constantly changing maybe the Euclidean sequence isn't something that divides by four so the gates coming out of this would constantly be falling in different places and then I'd use that as a source of modulation for the rest of the modular. Uh, then I've got these two A140s envelope generators. It's a similar kind of thing to the VCAs, like I do miss having envelope generators. Currently I've only got Maths, which is capable of doing two attack decay envelopes, and I miss having ADSR envelopes when I'm stuck with just the bottom case. However, it's the same thing, like the Dobfer stuff works really well, but when you're limited on HP, this, this amount of space for two envelopes is just too much. Here's Clouds. This is one of my all-time favorite modules. Um, when I got it, it just absolutely opened up a whole world of Sonic possibilities. I've actually got the Camel firmware installed on it, which does like amazing beat repeat eight esque stuff and it's amazing for like cutting up reversing mangling sounds i also love using clouds on like percussion not just to create drones to create like weird crackly textures and stuff clouds is in here a because it is a little big and you know i'd love to get one of those like micro clouds and find a way to have that in the smaller case and b because i reached a point where i was using it in every single patch in every single track and i didn't want to release a whole load of music that all sounded just like clouds music so it's moved to up here next up is dot for multiples this also used to be in here and was really useful but i i tend to use the um tip top banana cables now instead and uh or they don't take up any hp then i've got two here and here dot for lfos i do use these all the time but it's another thing where it's like maths can do two lfos if i need it or pams can do eight lfos if i need them this is loads of space there's just no reason for it to be in the travel case. So ALM's Boss Bow Tie is a voltage control switch. I bought this because I had a really cool idea of like sending loads of different oscillators between it and like audio rate skipping between them. And I used it for that patch and then I basically didn't end up using it for any other patches. I've heard that the Boss Bow 2, which is the new version of this, basically has all of this functionality plus way more so maybe if i was going to buy this again i'd just get the new one but for me not a great buy so next up dot for quantizer great quantizer two channels which is not bad for the hp that said i don't use it very much there is a way to use pams to quantize external cv i've actually made a video on how to do this trick and i'll link it down below so now we get into the sort of case that i take everywhere with you probably recognize it from a lot of my videos and i'm going to give you guys a bit of an update on it uh, talk about what's working what's not working and what i'm really enjoying out of it at the moment expert sleepers es9 absolutely brilliant i've sort of raved about this in previous videos but you know, just having 14 audio inputs and 12 audio outputs is a total game changer. Totally changed my workflow when I got it. Just means you can plug into a computer and be ready to go anytime, any place, and have a full mix. Next is the ALM Squid Salample, which is a Eurorack modular format sample. Um, this is another one I love because it just allows you to pack in eight voices. I've made a whole video on this one, I'll also link that down below, really cool tricks you can do with it and in a small system like this is, when you take away the other parts, having that many extra voices really means you can use a small system to sort of create whole tracks which you wouldn't be able to do without something you know capable of outputting that many different sounds. WMD Fracture, this is one that sort of runs the risk of me having to move up here because I use it too much. It's a clap module, I love the reverb on it. I love that you can sort of, it's very diverse, you can sort of meld it into almost anything you want um, and it just sounds amazing. So great job from WMD. ALM Akemi's Taiko, uh, love hate with this one as I'm sure a lot of people have. It's very annoying that it doesn't properly track fault per octave unless you delay the trigger but also the chip in it sounds absolutely unreal um, and it's capable of making some sounds that I don't think you can make any other way in modular unless you happen to have um, a chemist castle. 
I then got this dot for white noise and random output module. I sort of end up using this in every patch and I keep thinking, oh, it's a bit boring, so I should take it out. But then I realize I uh, use it in every patch, so it's gonna have to stay. Next up is Platts. Uh, I've actually sort of been getting along with Platts a little bit better. It's an oscillator that is capable of doing like 10 million different things. It takes a bit of getting to know to get good sounds of it and like sending it through a nice filter or a nice low pass gate definitely makes a difference as does sending a low level of noise into the FM or an LFO just to sort of make it a bit less perfect. Uh, so down here I've got the foot, dock for, uh, foot pedal interface. This was a game changer because it allowed me to use a foot pedal to set up macros to send signals across the whole of the rest of the modular. I've got a video on how I use that and I'll also link down below and definitely check it out if that's something you're interested in. So next up is Pamela's new workout. In every patch it's just uh, for me, it's more a source of modulation as I use the BeatStep Pro to sequence and as the master clock. And then I use Pamela's new workout IO for like stepped random outputs, LFOs, quantized bits and bobs that are synced up with the BeatStep Pro but um, to modulate the rest of the system. So in here, there's the Make Noise LXD, which is apparently now incredibly hard to get hold of. So I'm really thankful that I did get one when I did. It sounds brilliant two low pass gates and this amount of HP is always a win. The dot for wash filter, probably my favorite filter in Eurorack. And I like the yellow and black one, it looks really cool. Um, if you haven't heard a wash filter, definitely check one out because there's any other thing in synthesis that sounds like a wash filter. Uh, make noise maths, you know, in this small system, having something that can be a slew limiter, you can be like a little two channel mixer, you can use you can just generate like CV offsets or use it to control other modules. It's got logic functionality. If you don't have maths, get a maths. Obviously you will need maths. That's why it's the number one module in the universe. Similar to Territus Alta, another sort of modern classic. Um, it sounds great. I use it basically as a percussion module. I'm just so quick to dial in the, kick, the exact kick sound you want for a patch or for a track. And it's also amazing for like really cutting through with uh, snare noises. So I'd really recommend it. Uh, mutable instruments, warps. Um, I actually, you know, I think the last time I spoke about this, I said I was thinking about getting rid of it, but it pairs up really nicely for dual oscillator, like sending one of each of the oscillators into warps, um, you know, sort of modulating the algorithm. You can really quickly get some crazy stuff. The other thing I really enjoy it for is I've got the Parasite firmware on there and I love using the delays in that. Final module in the case, although not in the video, and is the bootlet. The dual oscillator model 258T for a bootlet and tip top audio. I made a video on this when it came out. It sounds great. I was blown away by how good it sounded so quickly. I'll link it down below along with all of the modules in this system. And if you want to support this channel, um, please use those links because uh, they are affiliate links and it helps me out. Down here at the bottom, the Moog Mother 32. Recently I've been using this either when I just need like an extra LFO or an extra envelope generator or I want to send like plats through the signal path in here and use like the VCA and VCF. I've been using it as that. In the past I used to just use it as like a little self-contained voice but um, recently I've not been loving that. But it's a great little synth. It does pair up really well with the Eurorack system. The main sort of controller for all of this is the BeatStep Pro and the Novation Launch Control XL. BeatStep Pro takes care of all the sequencing and clocking. The Launch Control XL I use to set the levels of everything that comes out through the Expert Sleepers ES9. Thanks for watching this video guys, I know it's probably been a bit of a long one, but I hope you've uh, sort of got something out of it and I hope it was interesting to see, especially the modules up here that I've not spoken about before.